Hi, I'm Peter Kraft, and today I'd like to talk to you about Willem, a statistically aware and an optimizer for machine learning inference. So as you already know, machine learning inference is an increasingly important problem today. And there's been a recent focus on tools for ML prediction serving. A common bottleneck in machine learning inference is feature computation. In many ML inference applications, a pipeline of transformations computes numerical features from raw data and then executes a model on those features. Often, this feature computation is the most expensive part of ML inference. Feature computation is most often a bottleneck when using inexpensive ML models, such as boosted trees or linear classifiers, but not neural networks. This happens most often when performing ML inference on tabular or structured data. Feature computation is often a problem in production. For example, in this study of production ML inference applications at Microsoft, they found that feature computation accounted for over 99% of the runtime of some applications. Unfortunately, the current state of the art in ML prediction serving doesn't do everything it can to maximize the performance of feature computation. They optimize ML inference using traditional serving and compiler optimizations, which work well, but neglect the unique statistical properties of machine learning applications that could be used to improve performance by even more. One statistical property of machine learning that can be leveraged to dramatically improve performance is the amenability of machine learning to approximation. For example, in class, most ML classification workloads contain a mixture of easy and hard data inputs where an easy data input can be accurately classified by a computationally simple model, but a hard data input requires a more powerful model. Existing ML inference systems use the same expensive model to classify both easy and hard data inputs. But a statistically aware system could use a computationally cheap model on easy data inputs and a more expensive one on hard data inputs therefore significantly improving performance. Another interesting property of machine learning is that many ML applications are run as part of higher level applications, such as top K queries. A top K query asks us to rank and return the K highest scoring items in a data set. For example, the 10 artists a user would like the most. Existing systems would do this naively by predicting every single item in the data set with the same expensive model and then ranking and returning the top K. A statistically aware system, on the other hand, could use a computationally cheap model to identify and discard the majority of low scoring items and then use a more powerful model on the minority of highest scoring items to precisely rank and return them, dramatically improving performance. These statistically aware optimizations I just discussed aren't new, and they've been used in both industry and academia for a while. However, existing implementations of them are application specific and custom built. You have to do a lot of work yourself to adapt these optimizations for your particular workload and problem domain, for example, by constructing your own approximate model. This creates a dilemma. ML inference systems are easy to use, but they're slow because they don't implement statistically aware optimizations. The optimizations are much faster, but they require a lot of work to implement and significant ML and domain expertise. So that begs the question, can we build an ML inference system that's both fast and easy to use? We think the answer is yes. And that's why we developed Willem, a statistically aware optimizer for machine learning inference. Willem optimizes ML inference applications whose performance bottleneck is feature computation. It uses automatic, model agnostic, statistically aware optimizations 
to dramatically improve the performance of real-world ML inference workloads. In the remainder of this talk, I'm first going to give a high-level overview of the Willem system, then discuss Willem's statistically aware optimizations in more detail, and then evaluate Willem's performance on real workloads. At a high level, the goal of Willem is to automatically maximize the performance of ML inference applications whose performance bottleneck is feature computation. Willem begins with an ML inference application written as a pipeline from raw data to features to predictions. The first thing Willem does is infer the transformation graph of this application, figure out which operators are computing which features. Next, Willem optimizes feature computation using the statistically aware optimizations that I'll discuss later in this talk. Then, Willem optimizes individual operators using compiler optimizations. Finally, Willem returns a compiled and optimized pipeline ready to perform ML inference. Now, I want to talk about the first of Willem's statistically aware optimizations, the end-to-end -end cascades optimization, which maximizes the performance of classification workloads. So the high-level idea behind cascades, as I mentioned earlier, is that most classification workloads contain a mixture of easy and hard data inputs, where an easy data input can be accurately classified by a computationally cheap model, but a hard data input requires a more expensive model. The idea behind cascades is that you can use a cheap model to identify and classify easy data inputs, then cascade the others, the hard inputs, to a more powerful model. Cascades have been around for a while and are used for tasks like image classification and object detection. Unfortunately, existing cascade systems are application specific and custom built. If you want to use cascades, you have to manually construct your own approximate model and tune its parameters. This can be very difficult and requires extensive expertise in both machine learning and your particular problem domain. The goal of Willup is to make this easier. Willup automatically constructs cascades for any ML application whose performance bottleneck is feature computation. It does this by cascading feature computation, computing only some features for easy data inputs and cascading to computing all features for hard data inputs. By default, an ML inference application computes all features for all data inputs, predicts with the model, and returns that prediction. Willup instead computes a handful of high value, low cost selected features for each data input, predicts with an approximate model, then returns that prediction. Unfortunately, the approximate model is not accurate enough to classify all data inputs by itself. Therefore, we only return its prediction if it's above a threshold, which we, if its confidence in that prediction is above a threshold, which we call the cascade threshold. If the confidence is not above a thresh, that threshold, we will compute all remaining features and cascade to the original model. Okay, so that's a high level overview of how cascades work. Now let me talk to you about the more interesting and difficult aspect of cascades, which is how we automatically construct them for any ML application whose performance bottleneck is feature computation. Willup automatically constructs cascades ahead of time during model training for a model's training set and an accuracy target. The most important question to answer when constructing cascades is which features to select for use in the approximate model. What are our high value, low cost features? We want to select the features from which we can construct cascades that minimize expected query time given an accuracy target. 
So what is expected query time? Well, when we conduct a query, what if two things can happen? Either we approximate the query or we don't approximate the query. If we do approximate the query, then we only have to compute the selected features. Then expect, so the first term in our expression for expected query time is the probability that you can approximate times the cost of computing selected features. If you don't approximate, then you have to compute all features. So the second term in our expression for expected query time is the probability that you don't approximate times the cost of computing all features. Sum these together, and we get a complete expression for expected query time. We want to construct cascades from the set of features that minimizes expected query time. Here's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to choose several set potential feature costs. Then, we're going to find the best set of feature that has that cost for each of the costs we've chosen. Next, we're going to have to figure out which set of features does the best overall. To do that, we're going to train an approximate model and find a cascade threshold for each feature set we've selected. We'll then compute the expected query time for each set of features and construct cascades for a set of features that performs the best overall, the one that minimizes expected query time. So first, we have to choose several potential feature costs. These will just be simple numbers, say one-tenth of the total cost, one-fifth the total cost, and so on. For each cost we've chosen, we want to find the best set of features that has that cost. So what do I mean by best? What I mean is that given a feature cost, Cmax, we want to find the set of features that minimizes expected query time given that the cost of those features is equal to Cmax. This is equivalent to finding the set of features from which we can, can train the most accurate possible approximate model given that the cost of those features is Cmax. Unfortunately, computing approximate model accuracy is expensive. Therefore, we'll, we'll estimate the accuracy of an approximate model trained on a set of features as the sum of the permutation importance scores, scores of those features. That turns this minimization problem into a knapsack problem that we can solve easily. OK, so now we have several sets of several best feature sets. We have to figure out which of these best feature sets is the best one overall. To do that, we're going to train a model and find a cascade threshold for each set. We're going to train this small, we're going to do this empirically using held out data. We're going to train a proximate model on each set of features on part of the overall training set. We're then going to predict a held out portion of the training set and then use the predictions on that held out set to empirically determine the cascade threshold, determine how often we can approximate while keeping accuracy above a target. Once we know how often we can approximate while keeping high accuracy for each set of features we selected, it's easy for us to compute expected query time for each set of features we selected, and then construct cascades from the set of features that minimizes expected query time overall. By following this algorithm, we can construct the cascades that minimize expected query time while keeping accuracy above a target. In practice, this improves ML inference performance by up to 5x without statistically significant accuracy loss. All right, now I want to talk about Willem's second optimization, the top K query approximation, which maximizes the performance of top K queries. A top K query asks us to rank the K highest scoring items in the data set. For example, the 10 artists or 10 songs a user would like the most. 
Top K queries are interesting because they are asymmetric. They require high value items to be predicted and ranked precisely because they're going to be returned. Low value items, on the other hand, need only be identified as low value, and then they can be discarded because they won't be returned. Therefore, we can approximate top K queries by using an approximate model to identify and discard low scoring items and then ranking and returning high scoring items with a more powerful model. Existing systems have done similar things. However, these systems were application specific and custom built. They required users to manually construct their own approximate models and tune their parameters. Just like in Cascades, this is a difficult and error prone process. Willup, on the other hand, automatically generates approximate models and tunes their parameters for any ML inference application whose performance bottleneck is feature computation. Just like in Cascades, Willup automatically selects features and tunes parameters to, minimi to maximize query performance while keeping accuracy above a target. If you're interested in more details, please see our paper. Overall, this improves performance of real-world workloads by up to 10x. Okay, now I want to talk about how we evaluated Willem's performance and show that it works on real workloads. We evaluated Willem on benchmarks curated from top performing entries to major data science competitions like Kaggle and Wisdom. We're going to look at three benchmarks in this presentation, although there are more in the paper. We'll look at music, which does music recommendation, and queries remotely stored pre-computed features. The next benchmark, purchase, predicts a customer's next purchase and uses tabular features automatically generated by the AutoML tool feature tools. The third benchmark, toxic, performs toxic comment detection and computes string features. First, we're going to look at how much the end-to-end -end cascades optimization improved throughput on classification workloads. We'll compare against two baselines, the original implementation of the benchmarks and a compiled version of the benchmarks that runs a bit faster. We find that end-to-end -end cascades improve throughput by anywhere between 60% and 5x overall baselines. Next, we'll look at how much the end-to-end -end cascades optimization can improve latency. We find that the optimization dramatically improves median latency, but has a smaller effect on tail latency because the tail of a workload optimized for end-to-end -end cascades is going to be the set of data inputs that could not be approximated and therefore do not run any faster. Finally, we'll look at how much a top K, we'll evaluate the, the top K query approximation on top K workloads. We find that it improves throughput by anywhere between 2.7x and 10x against all baselines. So in conclusion, what I'd like you to take away from this talk is that it's possible to dramatically improve the performance of ML inference through statistical optimizations, such as approximation, and that we can do these easily and automatically using simple algorithms like the Willup algorithm that I just described. If you're interested in learning more, please see our source code on GitHub or look at our paper online published in MLSYS earlier this year. Thank you.